No matter what shape you believe the Earth to be, whether you think Earth is a convex ball, a concave bowl, or flat level plane, there is an objective, empirical, scientific, demonstrable way to prove it once and for all. All purely perceptual proofs, from long-distance photography to laser tests, are unfortunately subjective, non-empirical, and can always be contested by appealing to various visual phenomena such as refraction. The ultimate experiment to practically prove the shape of the Earth would be a fixed, permanent, tangible construction demonstrating empirically, in perpetuity, the truth for all to test. Professional structural engineer and outspoken globe skeptic Brian Mullen has invented and outlined just such a structure in his Force the Line project. Hi, I'm Brian Mullen, and this is Force the Line. Here's my idea. What we do is we need two miles of relatively flat land, or it's easier if we use flat land. I'm thinking Oklahoma, Nebraska. Uh, Florida would work, but there's a lot of crap in the way in Florida. There's so much foliage here that we would need maybe... We could do this under power lines, but who really wants to work under power lines? Um, so here's what we do. We set posts over a two-mile stretch of land. What I've got here are my posts, okay? Ten feet on center. Here's your first post, second post at ten feet, third post at twenty feet, all the way down to two miles, mile, two miles away. Here's your last post at 10,560 feet, or two miles, and your second to last post at 10,550 feet, okay? got my brake line in here to show that the distance between these two posts is 10,530 feet. You see what, what, what I've drawn here, okay? Now the idea is everything is based off the, very, off the first two posts, okay? What we do, we set the posts in a straight line. It's very, very easy to do. Contractors can definitely do this. And then between the very first two posts, we construct a beam between the two and level that beam, okay? We level this beam, okay? Make it level. This is typically how beams are constructed. You always level them out, unless there's a roof slope or something. But for a floor beam or something, you would always level it. Anyway, so this point right here is this point on the Earth if we live on a convex sphere, okay? Meaning that when this beam is leveled, there is a, an imaginary line perpendicular to the center of gravity of the Earth, extending to, to the center of the Earth. And then we do the same thing all the way to the end. We level each one of these beams all the way for two miles. Okay? So, every time you level one of these beams, it should be extending, it should be perpendicular to a line extending to the center of the gravity of the Earth. So over two miles, those beams will actually follow the curve. They have to. If, if, a, if, this, if a level works, the only way it can really work is on a sphere is if it works with the center of gravity. Okay? Then what we do is we use a rectilineator type device below it to force the line. This very first beam we construct right here is perfectly parallel, or as close as we can get to perfectly parallel to this beam, it's leveled too. We level that beam, okay? But then for all of the rest of the beams on the forced line, as, as I'm calling it, we use a connection here that forces this beam, it forces a right angle connection to the first beam, okay? So, say this is our first beam that's leveled. Okay? It's leveled out. The next beam that comes in, we use precision machine work, like a CNC machine or something similar, to create a connection that forces a right angle connection to that first beam. Okay? So now, this second beam is not actually level. You wouldn't be able to tell from the naked eye. And if you put a level on it, it would probably still show that it's level because our levels are not that accurate. But it will stay it will stay in line with this beam. And we do that all the way down to the end. Now, 
we can just use a rectilinear type of vise. We don't have to build these beams. We don't need 1,057 of these beams on the bottom because they're going to be expensive to make to make a right angle connection like this. You see I've got 90 degrees at all four corners. We can just leapfrog it and just mark it. Mark the columns or the posts as we go until we get the line. Now if the earth is a sphere with a circumference of 25,000 miles, then over two miles we should see from this point to this point a drop of roughly 32 inches. You can draw this in AutoCAD and prove it. This is what it has to be if the circumference of our world is 32 inches or, or 25,000 miles. Okay? So we go all the way down to the end. And this last post, we should have 32 inches between these two lines. All right, who's ready for the hard truth of this one? I'm just going to say it because it's facts, it's truth. What you do with it is up to you. Brian Mullen started pushing and organizing the force the line test, which was a similar water based test to prove the lack of curvature. This is when he was personal, personally attacked and threatened with his career because it's hard to call the civil engineer that can back his work up with math a crazy idiot. So they had to get him off YouTube. Because he was pushing the actual test that would prove the globe a lie. Years ago, after presenting this, Brian Mullen was bullied, threatened, and made to choose between ceasing his online activism and deleting his channel, or being fired from his job. With a family to look after and little support from the budding Flat Earth community, Brian chose the responsible thing for himself and his family and his excellent work and ideas were tabled. Recently, as the Flat Earth community has continued to grow, however, there is a much renewed interest in forcing the line, and myself and many others would like to see this experiment set up in several places all over the world. So, I'm sure you know what this is. This is, this is a speed square, okay? Which means that, you know, it's perfectly squared on these sides, so you've got a vertical and a horizontal which are perfectly at 90 degrees to each other okay so for your construction family and friends this is what they you know they know they know once you've established your plumb and this is what you have to expect okay and this is going to be difficult for me but fuck it i'll get a bash right, i'm going to hold it here right i might not be perfectly leveled here but it doesn't matter so if we have the plumb and we have the level, the horizontal, right, both intersecting each other at 90 degrees, right, and then we continue along that very same path. We can do that to infinity. We can use this simple tool to infinity. That simple tool to infinity will never produce a curved line, ever. Right, that's how simple it is to comprehend the reality that you're actually living in. Same goes for this device. So, we don't have the vertical, but we can have the measure of 90 degrees. We can have a plumb reference, which would be the main reference, regardless of what's going on underneath. And we construct from the reference level so that the bubbles remain perfectly in the centre so that we know we're now constructing the level at a perfect 90 degree angle from the vertical, the plumb. Okay? And again, in the same situation as I've just given you before, we can do that to infinity and you will never, ever, ever produce a curved surface. So once we prove and directly measure, you know, with a device on video showing people measuring, oh, yep, nope, it's same here, same here, all the way down the line, same measurement. 
They then can't scream refraction. They can't scream any optical visual phenomena to explain away the lack of curvature like they do in every visual test we present. And to this point, that's all anybody ever, Bedford level, anything. You know, it just seems to me providing irrefutable, undeniable measurement. And I would like this test, whatever, if it gets done and however it gets done, to be a permanent structure. So that, again, anybody can come and verify for themselves the, the proof and the accuracy and the lack of curvature. In fact, I, kind of, I find it funny that we don't have anything like this in the world. We have nothing that shows our curvature. Imagine how cool it would be to, to build something like this and leave it in place. Oklahoma, Nebraska, you guys, you guys want some, some tourism? Build this. Okay. Imagine driving in a dark sky area at night, and maybe they put some low lights, some lights that run down the line on this thing, and drive next to it, put a path next to it, or ride a bike or something. And as you're traveling, you can watch the curvature happen right before you eyes. You can watch these two lines converge. They will both appear to be lines to you, but one of them's actually a line and the other one's curving. Why don't we have this? Disney, I'm looking at you. Now you might argue, oh, it's just, you know, nobody's going to spend money on that. It's, a, it's just a waste of money to do something like that. We have pictures from space that show it's a ball. There's no point. Well, those pictures from space cannot calculate this curvature. They cannot prove the curvature. They want you to believe that all these things are happening on curved surfaces just because there's an image presented to you on a TV screen. But it doesn't work on a curved surface. It never will. These things do not work on curved surfaces. The same as when they invoke trigonometry that deals with planar triangles. Does it work on a curved surface? If I'm on a curved surface and you know I'm constructing things in relation to something else, when something's done here on a curve, that's just going to throw everything all, all, all over the place. Nothing would ever work. Nothing. So again, myself and others just see the value in putting direct measurement to water and proving it does not curve is checkmate. They either have to, because once again, why this is so important? Because they can't fake curvature in large bodies of water. You know, people, you, we understand that, right? It's something that they can't fake. So once we do it and prove there is no curvature and it's level and flat all the way across, they, they're in checkmate. Let's force the line. Let's stop arguing about what we're seeing and measure it mechanically. Let's find our curvature or no curvature, you know, to be able to drive next to this and look up at the universe and shake your fist and say, hey, we're not so small after all. That's only 32 inches and two miles. What? We ain't that small, right? Are we going to see this? If we do this? I think this experiment would work. I've thought about this a lot. I don't think there's any real flaw in this. Please tell me if you see a flaw in it. But I think that this simple tool that we've been using for a very long time can show us the truth. Just the level. That's all we need, really. And of course, some precision machining to make the rectilinear type device. But simplicity is what's important. A simple way to measure the curvature. And we can construct these things all over the world. You know, Neil deGrasse Tyson is now telling us that we, we're not a perfect sphere as it appears from space, appears from space, that we are an oblate spheroid, or more like a pear shape. Well, let's figure out how much of a pear we are. If we build these things across flat surfaces of land, I mean, you could do this in the mountains, you would just need really long poles, but if we built this all over the world, 
built these things all over the world and got our numbers and started comparing it and, and really kept building them over and over so we get really good at building them to, and improving the accuracy of the measurements, we could really get an idea of what our world is. One man currently taking the initiative to hopefully construct the first one is Scottish flat earther Chris Watson, also known as Flatty McFlatface. You know, someone came to my comments yesterday and asked who's Flatty McFlatface, so I just left a link to his video and said, ask him yourself. <laughs> so maybe he put that out for people that might be wondering. I know him from years back. Um, you know, he was in the Flat Earth movement trying to make a difference, just like all of us. So, um, it's, you know, perfectly reasonable for people to want to know who's putting this GoFundMe together and, and God bless them for it, for doing it, you know, it's all we can ask people that have the motivation and the drive and the ability to organize these things. I think we'll all, we can all do whatever part we can to just try to get this test done. Does it have to be the Brian Mullen forced the line test? You know, as far as I'm concerned, no. Any cost-effective, um, you know, well-thought-out plan to directly measure, mechanically measure, again, with measuring equipment, taking measurements by hand, proving no curvature is, you know, is the irrefutable irrefutable scientific evidence we can put in the face of the globe priests and they can either accept it test it themselves or deny it but it is the empirical definitive proof again of either curvature or no curvature so that's why i feel you know this is this is the next step in the progression um, someone left a comment in the video yesterday that, you know, Flat Earth Core has done, did that laser test, and it was a great test. I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from that at all. But again, it does not involve direct measurement of, you know, right up on it measuring that there is no curvature that should be there and proving it by measuring. Um... Because, you know, I know that, that Flat Earth Core made their laser test as valid as they possibly could. But I also know who we're up against. We're up against compulsive lying, science denying charlatans that will just continue to spout refraction, refraction, refraction till the cows come home. I'm always skeptical of online donations and encourage people to do their due diligence before handing hard-earned money over to anyone. But at the same time, it's also important to support genuine people doing important work, and to put our money where our mouths are. And for that reason, you will find a link to Chris Watson's GoFundMe below. Beyond pure monetary donations, however, I'm making this video to spread awareness about this important experiment, one which should be replicated the world over and should be supported by all people, regardless of their opinion of the shape of the Earth. Globe Earthers, SpaceX, NASA, and all government space agencies should be just as determined as Flat Earthers are to erect these constructions and prove the curvature, or lack thereof, once and for all. Interestingly enough, though, it only ever seems to be Flat Earthers who truly care about empirically demonstrating the shape of our world whereas globe earthers continue to be content with their non-empirical, non-demonstrable, pseudoscientific explanations and doctored photos and videos. So, I'm going to post the link. Flat make flat face has put one up. It's called Force Align. It's very similar to what I'm proposing, and it would work just the same. Again, we're just dealing with square reference you know, being true to the plumb and the level, right? And if we come halfway across the level with a plumb and we start again, you're just going to keep producing a base foundation that will go to infinity. No curve. 
Again, these are the geometric principles that we all use. Engineer, construction, navigation, everything. Everything practical. Treats reality as a Cartesian, you know, uh, reference. Plums, horizontals. Right? That's a fact. You will never find any sort of engineering blueprint or, you know, construction blueprint or, or any diagram whatsoever that has a baseline that is a curved surface. Because none of these tools would ever work. So who's telling you lies? The, the practical applications that have been done for centuries, generations, or these noobs with their TV screens and their fucking shitey actors presenting the earth to you as something contrary to what it actually is. That's your fucking choice. That's the choice you have. Embrace reality or embrace willful delusions. And finally, I wanted to thank everyone for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. As many of you know, YouTube has repeatedly banned me simply for speaking taboo truths, and I've still to this day never been able to recover the amount of views or subscribers I had on my original channels. Many other flat earthers in the community have had similar things happen to them, and with YouTube's new bias algorithm, now more than ever, we need to help promote small channels to encourage them to continue their much-needed work. So below, you will see a pinned comment with links to many of my favorite Flat Earth channels. Please take a minute to subscribe and send some love to these great content creators. My apologies for anyone I missed. Please simply reply with a link to your channel so the entire pinned thread can be one long recommended list. Thank you.